Welcome to Unapologetically Anxious Me, Confessions of a Haitian Girl, the podcast where I blend life, love, sex, and relationships with mental health, social issues, and history, all from my very unabashed perspective. Join me, Joe Ciceron, as we unravel the power of vulnerability, celebrate storytelling, our history, and connect with incredible individuals who have tales to share. Let's dive deep into our essence and the narratives that mold us, because in this space, we believe in the magic of authenticity and the beauty of being unapologetically you. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Anxious Me, Confessions of a Haitian Girl. I'm your host, Joe, and today I have the incredible, successful thruffle from Peacock TV's Couple to Thruffle. That is Corey Wilder and Denise. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having us. <laughs> sound effects, sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really excited that you guys are on this platform and doing this with me because I've had the very lucky opportunity to talk to a few castmates now and I was definitely gunning for you guys from the very beginning because I was like I need to hear from them especially since you guys left early so I feel like we did not get like a wrap-up story from you like we did for a lot of the other cast members and so I just I just want to know like what did life look like when you left early and um how like what how'd you feel when you were in the house and you made those decisions but let's go back to the beginning though (laughs) of like what drew you in like to each other to begin with yeah i honestly i i think i'm a little bit demisexual so i was like okay beautiful people and then we started talking and i think wilder was like what do you like and i was like a books i don't know i don't know and he just started asking me about books or something i think i think Corey and i talked about rocks for like 20 minutes maybe at one point yeah we went on and a rant I, about how much we like wikipedia and like to just read the wikipedia as a random facts yes <laughs> yes and i was like okay so this is this is good this is the way my <laughs> so the journalist in me is like yes i get that <laughs> Like, wait, you have books and rocks in common? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that's all you Hold need, on. really. Because you have so little time to actually get to know somebody when we were there. So it really was just kind of the, the questions of do, you know, that the classic common interests kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, but something that stuck out to me, Denise, is when you actually, um, it was not, I, it wasn't, I don't think they filmed it because they didn't, they didn't make the edit. But we actually, yeah, we that whole conversation about rocks and then you like, took my hand very just calmly and we're just like hey like because one of your love languages is is physical touch and that was for me really like okay wait this is a person who can slow down even in a stressful environment like this and it it brought me a lot of comfort which drew me drew me to you we're grounding (laughs) we're grounding the reality tv So, of course, you know, in reality TV, we're only seeing like a very small snapshot of who you are. So I think that's pretty important place to start. Like, I just want to know a little bit about all three of you and your background and like what led you to even being on this reality show to begin with, because I know everybody's story is a little different. Oh, okay. Um, Well, I ended up on the show um they reached out to me i think like they saw my instagram or something like that i was living as a vagabond in my car for like a year already and they were like you seem fun and free and interesting would you like to do this strange thing and i think i would normally say no except that it was about non-monogamy and i was like this is my area of expertise so um i think i just I've been polyamorous for several years. Um, and so I kind of wanted to represent and I thought that would be really cool. So that's kind of how I ended up on there. Okay. So had you been like identifying as polyamory, like even publicly before that? Um, I mean, define publicly, but yes. Yeah. I have been moving through the world as a polyamorous person. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. 
and like a queer person and a non-traditional person already that was like kind of established identity. That's super cool. That's nice. And had you ever been with like a couple though before this experience? No, this is my first time dating two people that are also dating. dating. <laughs> okay, so how about yeah. you? We were together for nine years before we went on. So wow. we're at 10 years now. Oh. Um, yeah, or was it eight years before? I don't know. No, we were, yeah, we were joking about like we're the grandma and the grandpas of the show. <laughs> it's just like whatever y'all going through, just like just let us know we're here. And you're like, <laughs> we've been, been, <laughs> we've been through it all. Um, but uh, yeah, same, same, similar story as Denise. Uh, they reached out to me, they thought I was a single. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I don't really post Wilder very often on my my Instagram. It's mostly just kind of fun costumes and fashion. And he's the one taking the pictures, so he's never there. So um, they were like, you want to be a single on a poly show? I'm like, actually, camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I have this, I have this boyfriend. Um, then they were like, oh, no, that's perfect. And so, yeah, it just, to me, uh, polyamory was always something that was very interesting. And we... We had um, done a few like ethical non-monogamous things together before, but never truly like poly. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking, oh, this is a great opportunity to learn a lot more and so about something that I'm genuinely interested in. And the fact that they had an expert was was a big like uh, green light for me. I, I thought we were going to have more time to actually speak with her while we were there and like have more mm -hmm. uh, guidance. But, um, but that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go on was to get more, um, yeah, experience and knowledge in an environment where everybody is, uh, like knows the situation, like knows that we're playing around with like, um, seeing if we can be poly. So you don't have to explain it to, to someone for the first time. Like if you're meeting somebody, um, it's kind of, it's understood. Right. So it was like, oh, it's going to be a fun uh, summer camp experience. I'm going to make some good friends. And then who knows, maybe I'll meet somebody. But I, I was really putting most of my um, <clears throat> my anticipation in just, in just learning mm -hmm. and wasn't sure if we would, we would find someone. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm really shocked that they, they had found somebody who, would work well for us and then found somebody for Denise who, who she felt like could work for her. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you're picking out of, it's a very small like selection of humans mm -hmm. and the odds are kind of not really in your favor, but we got so lucky. Oh. <laughs> it's like, I genuinely like you. Wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, wait, you want to do the same things that I want to do? Like, <laughs> what? You're okay with the vagabond vibe? What do you mean? I, I've seen the season a couple of times through now, and I remember one of the first things you I said, at least on camera, was like, you like rock climbing? <laughs> yeah. Like, so that's it? She passed the test? <laughs> yeah, that was it. There was so much more, and I'm like, that's the one moment they picked. And I'm like, I thought oh. about that. I was like, so clearly that was heavily edited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because like, I, I think one of the main things was was the fact that, yeah, like, uh, oh, you live in your car and you travel around. Oh, we have a camper van. I don't know why they didn't pick that sound bite. That was too a, long. We talked <laughs> too many long. words. They're like only three words at a time. The control room. I don't know what happens. <laughs> I, I, I always think about that, too, because there's there's so many opportunities. But I think this show specifically, um, and I'm sure you've read a lot of it, there's a lot of criticism out there from monogamous people and poly people alike about just the way the show was structured, the way the show was run. Now, you guys were actually in the show and part of it. Talk to me about what you experienced and how you feel about it. About the, you go uh, first. <laughs> uh, the monogamous polyamorous show. <laughs> the monogamy plus one show. <laughs> I was like, this is not what we signed up for. I thought it was going to be different. <laughs> like, Hold on. We're getting married after the first day and then we're going to move you in and then move you out. Mm -hmm. yeah so we're immediately moving in and then um you can't date anybody else unless i move out <laughs> did you know about any of those rules before uh, no no oh, okay. 
Yeah. It was like the day before, I think, that I found out like more logistically what was going to happen. So I was like, oh, we're not even like in the villa as singles yeah. unless unless we're picked, which is I I also was like, oh, so I'm not going to be in the villa very much. <laughs> 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 Good thing I've got my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we all we all assumed everyone was going to be in the same house, and then we all um, what was it? Oh, I and I didn't realize that. Yeah, you had to that somebody was going to be moving into like our room after the first night, and that because that stressed me out. I was like, wait, that, I that's a totally normal way to date. What do you mean? I would like to immediately sleep in the same bed with three people <laughs> for our first time hanging out. I don't even know your last like name. You for five that? minutes, we're ready to be in bed. Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was it's, in the real world. You guys didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, the, normally, one night stands. They bring all of their stuff too, and then oh yeah, all the, the all the suitcases. And I, I felt awful because I'd taken up all the closet space. <laughs> I did like, know the villa is yours. <laughs> she fills it up with her, like this stuff, and then they're like, "Actually, this other person needs all of this space." Also, I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Denise. Um, you can. I'm like taking my clothes out of the <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> She's like, "Use this." Because you know, for for Denise, like, I, 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 all I could think of is, "Oh my gosh, like." The, this has got to be way harder because I have someone who I, someone who I know and I've oh, been in the God. I've been in the room for 24 hours and I've been able to kind of like put my things around and so it's not only like a challenging situation but I, I was I, I felt like very conscious of that and I was like how yeah. can I make this slightly more comfortable <laughs> yeah. I I was thinking of that too when I first yeah. saw it like that must be really hard to be picked like especially that first to go around when you weren't aware that this is how the show is gonna go so you're just like oh oh we're going to bed like now like <laughs> right now yeah okay. yeah i feel like i'm a pretty easy breezy lemon squeezy person and uh they were really testing me they were, they were really trying to test <laughs> that they were like so this is okay and also this is okay and you also are okay with this and i'm like <laughs> so you gotta really roll with the punches <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah because you know you're you almost feel like a like a prop <laughs> yeah For a lot of the events a lot of the hangouts that we're doing you're like and you are also here can you participate in these activities in a b and c ways not by yourself not as yourself just like this in this way for them how much access did you have to the actual doctor they had a doctor oh the sex therapist therapist you're yeah. like there was a yeah. doctor <laughs> are we allowed to say yeah. that we really didn't talk to her like no. as zero yeah we were we were hoping to get a lot more time with shamira and i got this sense that shamira also wanted to yeah. be mm -hmm. there for the you know the the couples because I, I i imagine she was told something a little bit different as well and so then it's like when she's just there almost like as a prop who can't necessarily like intervene and give people tools to tamp down drama mm -hmm. it's it, you know, it, it just didn't, it didn't seem like they were actually allowing her to, uh, you know, do, do what her work. she was yeah. there to, be to do. Got it. So it, production was productioning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can only assume. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Got it. I'm waiting. Yeah. I feel like they really used Shamira for her credibility and to lend the show some credibility. And then yeah. they really like, they clipped her wings right away. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't like, we would request, would request her and say, Hey, we would love to have, you know, some time to ask some questions because mm -hmm. uh, things are coming up and I would like to get some advice. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we were like really trying and we yeah, were like, like, so we have actual problems. Can we, I don't want to like stand in a triangle. Can we like, can we talk about <laughs> some things? <laughs> I'm like I'm re I'm ready to move past these very uh, basic games and like actually. <laughs> so does that play into your um, decision to leave? <laughs> Nobody. <ever. laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. That that 100 <laughs> played into our decision to like get the fuck out of there. Yeah. I mean, we were antsy, yes, but I'm also sure that we <clears throat> didn't make great content while we were there. Yeah. 
I, no. I, I disagree. We gave we gave them a nice, simple Hollywood ending that they hit command save on. <laughs> you did. Yes, you did. irritated. Very, like, wrapped up in a bow. This works. See? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're like, done. Quick. You succeeded. And yeah. we made yeah. it happen, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's it it was very challenging for us to be in the villa past a certain point just because like all of us are like outdoor people like there's there's a beach there that oh, you, you couldn't go on a walk you, you literally couldn't go it's to right the there beach, like, unsupervised no way. Or, like, like, like so you guys didn't actually go on the beach like no, nah, so you see the beach in the B roll, but then it's like you can't actually like go as like an insurance issue. Like, why? You can't, you can't die in the water. They don't want you running away because <laughs> you might drown. We're like, that. peace. Yeah, basically. Yeah, <laughs> and so there's, oh gosh, there's I'm not... never gonna look at any show like this where there's a beach in the background, like oh, wow. the same yeah. ever again. <laughs> The beach is not yeah. a feature of the villa. It's a liability. <laughs> you got to wow. stay out of that water. Yeah, all those beautiful shots, of the, the beautiful beach, and the beautiful that. scenery. It's like, no, you can't. You can't go near that. I'm sorry. You can't. You're not. You're in house arrest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, Which, so yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, it just became very challenging for us to actually like continue to grow in this relationship when we're just sort of like. You know, it's like being stuck at your parents' house on a vacation. <laughs> There's literally someone always watching you. And they're also like, so how's it going with Denise? Like, <laughs> me alone. I'm like, I'm well, we'd <laughs> really like to escape this cage. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. Like, let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> And all the other house guests are like, we can tell you're doing so well. <laughs> so well. And we're like, oh, really? really? We're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd like to go for a walk now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like pacing in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Choose like, my own whereabouts. That's that's all just for five minutes. Just five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really strange how, like, quickly uh, you kind of... Um, I don't know for for me like be, for all three of us were used to you know going going camping living living out of their car and having a lot of you know physical freedom to literally go and do what you want to do mm -hmm. and we knew there were going to be restrictions when we joined obviously that was part of what we signed up for we just i don't think that we were prepared for how much we were going to be restricted in our day to days mm -hmm. and then for people who we, what, we, what we kept saying was oh i wish we could go do something that we enjoy together because we, mm -hmm. we don't really we're not really pool um what do they call them pool lizards or i don't know <laughs> we're, not, like, we're not like lay down by the pool the whole day which is like for <laughs> great. that's what they want to do i'm like get it but we're like no i want to climb a mountain and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat a bug i want to eat a bug <laughs> Like, so we were just kind of like, oh, like we want to do, um, you know, an adventure together. Cause that's how I think the three of us like to spend our time. And, and we thought this would be great for bonding. Right. Then, you know, continuing to just sit around and then not have, not have problems. <laughs> yeah. You're the beach on the challenges. I, I saw, you know, no. They, uh. they brought us near it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You touch the sand. <laughs> Don't that was the one that's the only time we were allowed outside is, is <laughs> on a very short leash that's why i was so excited about the hermit crabs on that one page i'm like look <laughs> yeah Brittany's like i can't be out here with the hermit crabs but there's so other cool. things outside of humans <laughs> yeah. wow yeah, the tent building challenge mm -hmm. they told us that the loser would the losers would have to sleep in the tents and the only the winner of the challenge would get to go back to the villa and last minute oh the rug on that and they're like just kidding you don't have to sleep out here everyone else is relieved and we're like what the hell we have <laughs> we're gonna sleep outside for a night like, <laughs> <laughs> like are you sure we can't just like sleep in the tent <laughs> You're like, see, there's some communication issues here that we're having. Yeah. And it's yeah. not with us, it's with production. Yeah, it's like, oh, we, we were so ready to be punished with a night. Like, this tent. environment is not healthy for a relationship. 
Yeah. It's, it's barely healthy for a person, let alone like, like normally when you are starting to date somebody, you don't spend every waking moment together 24 seven socializing with other people and with them and like being put into scenarios that like are not normal scenarios. Yeah. So it was like, you got, we got close really quickly because we're like trauma bonding, but like, it's not technically dating. So <laughs> yeah. What happened once you got home and started your lives together? Like, what did that look like? And what is home for all three of you? Cause I know you're in California. Where are you, Denise? Right now I'm in Utah, but next month I'm in Texas. Um, okay. I, I just be going, I just be going around. <laughs> Got it. Got it. You're like, just on the swim of my pants. <laughs> yeah, literally, I don't know what's going on from one second to the next. I just like show up and I guess man <laughs> year pretty much. True <laughs> modern day hippie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's so amazing. I think that's there's such a freedom in that. And so <laughs> when you did go back home, did you go home together? Or were you did you leave separately? How did it work? Uh, we well, we did. We were able to spend how many days was it? Ten days? Uh, seven. A week. So, yeah, it was it was seven seven with Denise and then three afterwards. Oh right, okay, yeah. So we yeah we spent a week together, uh, you know, exploring the area and going to the jungle, and so that that was really nice. But then yeah. that was like our actual date. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Yeah, it was an adventure together. <laughs> it was really, it was really needed. Um, and then, yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we both went our separate ways for quite a bit. I'm trying to remember the, um, oh, you didn't you meet up with us in the Berkshires? Was that the next time we spent time together? I think LA was first. So we LA came back first. and then in like a month, I met up with you guys in LA. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, and then you were driving to the Berkshires and we did like the Colorado trip. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So there was LA Pride. There was the Colorado trip, and then I met you guys in Massachusetts, and we did stuff there, and then yeah, like again and in Massachusetts. Like, we just we just kind of meet like we we meet up. So like I, I don't know how to describe. <laughs> um, like for example, we we went to Death Valley recently, and it's whenever we are going on an adventure, it's like, hey Denise, you want to meet us there, which works really well for us mm -hmm. i think because we both like that sort of thing and it's a really good place to spend time yeah um and so far that's kind of been i mean, don't believe what the end of the show says denise is not moving to los angeles <laughs> yeah i don't think i'm gonna move to los angeles i have still be vibing out here i don't know why they felt the need to say that no. yeah i yeah. I don't think that was that that came from you guys. So you guys didn't have like a say so in that either. They, they asked know. us. They asked us. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, how are you guys doing? We're like, we're great. We like still spend time. And then they were like, cool, you guys are moving in. There yeah. are only these traditional <laughs> roles. Cornwilder getting married, and then yeah. I'll be the ring bearer or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was like they felt they felt like it's Everything not had working. To be squished into these monogamous like frames. Yeah. 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 I that it just was, was really probably the hardest thing to watch as a polyamorous person myself. It was very, very difficult. And so I see why there's all this criticism of like this was just unicorn hunting. This was it was so focused on the couple and not everybody or just even we didn't even know like anything about the singles like which is why i'm like who are you denise <laughs> like, yeah. who like, even knows who needs to know apparently spell your name differently than other denise's i got nothing <laughs> you didn't even know the she new york books. stock exchange <laughs> yeah you didn't know i like books or bugs I didn't nobody know knew it. that i didn't know you like rock climbing that was <laughs> That was the most significant thing they told us. <laughs> apparently you were in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and the singles are so interesting also. Like, yeah. I wish that we got to, I, and I would have been better TV to like fall in love with the singles and be like, no, you should have picked Sadie. Like, what are yeah. you doing? Like, she's just your I type. And like, been, been more interesting was to at least, 
I know because for like storytelling purposes of a reality show, there has to be some level of like elimination or picking or whatever. They should have done at least where one time the the couples pick and then another time the singles pick like you know how mm. they do on bachelor in paradise where it's like the men versus the women it would be something like that where there's at least fairness so everybody's getting a choice but this was strictly like oh if you don't fit with the couple like and so well we just had no clue who they were and speaking to a few people like i spoke to frank recently and he's so fascinating like yeah <laughs> so funny and you wouldn't have known that from the show you would have just thought he was just a body that was being placed somewhere as a placeholder until this other person made their decisions and and that was very dehumanizing I felt. Yeah. And and I don't know that there is a lot of ways to make it ethical in the lens that they were trying to go because they are go trying to appeal to a monogamous audience. Yeah. Which I understand, but the fact is we had the opportunity to teach people a, a grander audience about polyamory and how it actually works and we limited everything that polyamory is about and making it that so that you had to choose people you had to choose um from singles to couples it could there couldn't be any intermingling of the singles or even intermingling of couples to couples which happens so often and <laughs> so it's like there's there's all these different um varieties of ways they could have spun the show and i guess maybe that was just too much for storytelling i don't know yeah the, yeah the other big issue for me was the the territorialness that they pushed on the couples to have over their single yeah it, like especially like like looking at the darian situation yes why are you guys make they hold the whole bead speed ceremony and all that it's like why do we need these necklaces that claim like oh, this is fine yeah it's just felt, I was like, I don't want to do this. I told him, I was like, I really don't want to do this. Like, this seems really weird. Mm -hmm. I don't enjoy this. I'm going to the producers. I'm just like, what, what is this? I'm like, what are you going to turn this into? Like, this is really strange. And they're like, no, it's fine. I'm like, what if I just don't do it? And they're like, no, you got to do it. And so it just felt that to me, that, that, especially that event was just yeah. one of the worst, um, situations to put everybody in. And then, it, and then it's causing animosity. That's, there's no need for it to be there because we don't have ownership over any of the singles, whether they're picked like by a different couple. I don't know. It just mm. Mm, it really sat with me the wrong way as I'm yeah. sure it did many other people. And the <laughs> format of this show hinges on like a certain amount of scarcity when in reality, the poly philosophy is one of abundance. Exactly. And so there's just an inherent disconnect there when, you know, they're trying to gamify right. love and romance and it's, you know, you can't get a realistic uh, representation. Exactly. I mean, I think polyamory is juicy enough. Like, I really feel yeah. like there was probably, it would probably still be unethical, but it would have been still using some more elements of polyamory and i think it would have been still really cool and really interesting but i think it just they just wanted it to be made for the public and the public is boring <laughs> and so they were like well we need to like cater it to, to to in a way that could make sense and i i feel like they could have done it differently and it still would have made sense they just like don't know that that's possible so i don't know and gave it like the the thick pages cardboard children's book version of Paul <laughs> and they're like hey, this cory and wilder <laughs> cory and wilder Another. pick only denise <laughs> <laughs> they are throughout but they move in together they're yes. moving in polyamory <laughs> like and what's funny is that like when you mentioned that um there there still could have been unethical the thing is like there's unethicalness in monogamy and in polyamory so why do we carry such a like high 
standard for people who are polyamorous and it's like if they get cheated on because cheating happens in polyamory manipulation happens in polyamory all the things that can happen in monogamy happens in polyamory <laughs> you know and it's it just you, the fact that you happen to be experiencing this with more than two people doesn't make it any less valid than any other relationship out there. And I think that that's the point, like had they actually allowed things to happen naturally, their story would have been right there. Their story would have been mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. It would have been hard to explain. That's actually true because that's what um, that's what Maximo and Ash was talking to me about in our in my interview with them. They explained that like while that probably would have been really good to have that, that also probably would have been really confusing from a storytelling perspective. However, I think good producers can really handle complicated stories, and I think people everyday people are more capable of handling the truth and complicated stories than we give them credit for and if this is a show for you you're going to watch it regardless if you want to or not and i can guarantee you the most people who watch that show were polyamorous people so you should have catered to people you know who are going to take an interest and follow all the way through because the people who probably came in for the beginning were just like, ooh, let's see what they're doing. And then they probably bounced after a while. But the people who stuck through were the people who still probably bitched and criticized all the way through. <laughs> but <laughs> they stayed till the end and they studied it so they can bitch and criticize with facts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, we didn't even stay to the end. Yeah, we didn't even make it to the end. <laughs> That's hilarious. Don't spoil um, it. Don't spoil it for me. I mean, it sounds like monogamous people could even read that it was like something was off. They were like, this does not seem like how it's supposed to be. And then they they were asking questions, I feel like, on our social medias and like yeah. in the Reddit and being like, I'm not polyamorous, but like, what the hell? Yeah very contradicting and a lot of it was dehumanizing and just the lens through which they told the story just was not healthy now that you are all in the real world and you're actually have been doing this for what about a year now a little over a year right yeah, I guess it's been a, yeah, it's, been yeah. A, it's been a year yeah oh my gosh i've known y'all for a year <laughs> what what makes you work? What do you think? And when it comes down to you as the foundation of your relationship, what makes everything make sense? Um, I'll say I take a no expectations approach to relationships. So I don't really show up thinking like, this is how people are supposed to be my needs. This is how our relationship is supposed to look. Um, I very much like to take people as they are and their lives as they are. And then if we can build something together with that, that's beautiful. Love that. Um, but I don't want to like force my way in and like make something happen that shouldn't happen. So I like a natural relationship playing out the way that it, it would just go. Um, so I think that you guys can let me know if I'm wrong, but it feels foundational that we just like allow ourselves to be who we are and then continue to connect that way. Yeah. I think the, so the major takeaway that we've had is trying to almost like reset our relationship back to the normal place that it would have uh, developed to had we just met in the real world and not been pushed into this framework with this, you know, Hollywood ending and this explanation of like, now this is where we're at. And so we're in many ways, like, it's like trying to unlearn and like <laughs> undo the, like the knot that the show tied us into mm -hmm. and actually like figure out like, okay, like, how is it that we like really work together? Like, how is it that we really feel about this? And once we realized that, I think it unlocked, um, like a lot of growth within us and made it so that it was like, okay, like the show happened and it's this thing, but now like, okay, let's figure out what we really are in the real world and like how we can appreciate each other there. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it was it it felt like yeah, we had to like I think that the the knot that they tied us in is a really good <laughs> analogy or metaphor for it. I mean, and you, and you can even see with the ending that they were they were saying that Denise is going to move in. So there were all of these preconceived, just this is what you are, and you're now basically getting married. And it felt, you know, like um, Denise, you had a good word for it too. Like it, 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 it shot us really far forward in what the relationship would be after maybe a few years of of, of dating somebody. And so for me, that put on a lot of pressure to be really, really good at this right away, which mm -hmm. I'm still learning a lot, and I'm learning about myself and um what it's like to date a new person because i haven't dated since 10 years ago <laughs> i'm like wait i like don't remember how to date and so all of a sudden it's like no you're moving in and it just felt like um yeah the show put a lot of these expectations and and once i was you know told by denise and wilder it's like hey like we can we it, we're allowed to step back like you can kind of like bring it back a little bit. And then it just felt much more enjoyable to, to yeah. get to, to know Denise mm -hmm. from a dating standpoint, as opposed to, oh, I'm supposed to be really good at this and so far along. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, which made the natural growth of getting to know her by, you know, taking her camping, um, that just much more like beautiful and natural and yeah, and, and 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 enjoyable as opposed to the 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 high pressure that we were kind of placed into. Yeah. I, I yeah. totally understand that. Um, my very first poly like relationship was a throuple as well, so I think that's mm. why this like show drew me in because we made all the mistakes, <laughs> 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 all the classics, and I was just like, mm, yeah, mm, oh yeah, oh oh mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that so like it was i was really just uh it was it was really crazy watching it um but like we've been in the lifestyle of like the poly world open relationship thing for about eight years now seven eight years and i remember experiencing so many of those things and i can only imagine what it would have been like to like be in this pressure cooker where you're like having to like you know explain your feelings and talk about them and make a decision and all that all within like you know what a day <laughs> or not even like hours <laughs> You're, you're yeah. like hours. That, that also goes to show like how unrealistic, obviously, what they were trying to do was. I think it the goal should have def definitely been to highlight connections in this lifestyle or this orientation of relationships and how it works and how different people in this polyamory community connect and and even people who are becoming polyamorous and how they learn and and how they take it step by step and all that and that was what we weren't seeing with everybody but there is such a challenging part to adapting and learning these new things going from monogamy to polyamory so what has been the biggest challenge in for all of you and also how are you protecting your mental health throughout it mm. protecting our mental health uh, what a novelty it's like the whole thing sort of made sense if um it's like you think about it it's like it's like a game show but instead of like you're not winning money uh and you're you're just gambling like your feelings yeah it's like, mm. honestly, actual feelings and that's what you're playing with on the on the poker table um and it was you know like we weren't actually expecting to like go in and find connection mm. and so that was like the the biggest like readjust to us was like oh okay so like we actually really genuinely enjoy denise as a person and like okay now what do we like how do we continue to as like you know stay safe on the show like play it safe on the show but then also like move forward in this like very real way mm -hmm. and you know just figuring that out i think has been the biggest challenge of like the post post show 
thing. Can I just say, I feel like the show and even a lot of the time when we converse about relationships, there's this underlying idea that there's this ladder, this like linear progression of what relating to someone looks like. Mm -hmm. And that's just not real. That's a myth. That's like a myth that's given to us by institutional messaging about how we are supposed to connect, how things are supposed to be, what can and cannot happen, what should or should not happen. And um, I got my degree in community health. So um, a lot of it was focused on understanding these systems of oppression versus privilege and understanding how these traditions that we have, which can be good or bad, affect health outcomes and how stigma affects health outcomes. And I think that tearing away the lens of what is supposed to happen for me has made me the most safe in myself and my identity and my journey with relationships, with connecting and also with myself. Um, because then I, I'm not under the guise that I have to be anything or our relationship has to be anything. Um, it can be whatever we make. And that's pretty creative. That's pretty interesting and fun and fantastic. And I would much rather live my life that way. And I think that that has shown up the most in my mental health experience is, is removing these, I don't know, shackles of the institutional messaging that I grew up with. Decolonizing. Decolonizing my lens on love, decolonizing my lens on land and experience and myself and identity. I, I, I want to decolonize all of it. Right. <laughs> See now why we, we, we date this person, right? <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't he not great? <laughs> oh my God. I, I don't think I don't think this experience would have been like as easy if Denise wasn't who she is. Totally. And like as you know, as like as a person that you know we're bringing into our relationship, she is just so emotionally intelligent mm -hmm. and also like just like truly caring and compassionate. Um, and, you know, if this was someone who was just like, you know, showing up to just like, you know, try and have some fun with like one of us or like, you know, try and weasel in or take advantage of the situation. It's like, like, that's not her like at all. Like she really genuinely cares about both of us and, you know, this otherwise challenging situation, like it would not be easy if she wasn't who she is. Yeah. That's, that's something that they both Denise and Wilder remind me of a lot. It's like, I, I think that I'm, I have, a, I have a hard time with expectations and then pressure. Mm -hmm. And I, it's like, I can see that I, that I'm capable of, of having the type of relationship that I want with both of them. But then it's like the anxiety of, of, of the, of the pressure, like gets in the way. And one of the things that helps me through it the most is just being reminded that uh these these both of these people these two people especially denise it's like no like they genuinely care about you and not because you're you have it all figured out and that is that it's like such a simple little reminder but it is just hugely helpful to the like waves of um like worry mm -hmm. uh about how i might not be yeah, perfect or, or handling something w gracefully. It's like, I'm, I'm allowed to be imperfect and, and m figure stuff out as I go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, having, having such a brilliant person, such as Denise, who comes in with so much emotional intelligence and awareness, it's, it's just a really nice reminder for me to be nicer to myself <laughs> as I'm like, as I'm new to this, I'm completely new to this world. And, and I, I genuinely want to be here. I just am very lucky to have two incredibly kind and supportive humans through it. And you definitely read that from your energy, even on the show and for sure here, um, which m makes me realize that obviously none of that was produced. You, you guys have this like energy of like you're truly protecting each other's hearts you're truly trying to make sure that you're taking care of each other's souls and not allowing 
you know, the outside noise get to you or dictate how you move. And that's so beautiful. And yeah. that, that, like, I can see that's still like in existence still a year later. That means so much like and and that's that's absolutely like the best thing ever like to like witness that and see it and feel it from just speaking to you i think is actually really great and and i think you're lucky you're lucky <laughs> yeah 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 so, I mean, so much of it is just having having found a good human being who we genuinely mm -hmm. genuinely kind of works I with that one go. i found good human being what are you <laughs> <laughs> don't let that denise go <laughs> yeah i mean i think like maybe maybe in some weird way the the camaraderie that we had while on the show about like hey we're in this together uh we are not against each other in in any way shape or form both like both like couple in the single or Denise and I or Wilder and I, because, you know, the show is obviously trying to kind of poke you and, right. and get you to be upset about certain things. Mm -hmm. And because that's, the, that's the point, right? Yeah. Um, but we were able to establish like a, no, like we are, if something's up, you know, we're gonna let each other know. And we, we maintained a level of instant communication and honesty that I think the producers didn't like. <laughs> Telling us, like, don't tell Denise you're gonna pick her. Don't tell her you're gonna pick her. And I'm like, why would I do that? I'm and like I, packing my bag, honest, like every time. Bag. Like, I guess I'm packing. I was like, don't pack. Did and they're like, no, you have to pack. Yeah, that was. I was like, don't pack your bags. Like, don't like. There's. I'm. We're picking. They didn't even use any of those shots. I didn't yeah. have to pack my bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think like the there's yeah there's like there's the trauma bond obviously but i think also just that uh there's a little bit of like no like we're gonna uh, like us versus them yes like, versus three of us <laughs> like you can't break this <laughs> i love that i love got a good thing going <laughs> that was definitely something that was very obvious on the show and so obvious now and it makes a difference now knowing that you guys were together for what nine years when you were on the show you can tell the difference between you and other couples in terms of like maturity and communication and how the longevity of your relationship when you've been in like almost a decade deep like you've gone through every uncomfortable like moment you could possibly go through and you have gone to a point of such radical honesty <laughs> that your communication is very pristine and so bringing in somebody else in that situation you bo you both knew yourselves well enough especially we saw how you navigated being able to be honest with wilder about like this is what makes me comfortable this is what makes me not comfortable and i loved it when you were able to be vulnerable and say like this is what has made me uncomfortable in me and wilder's relationship in the past and this is what this is bringing up for me and this is my concern and how gentle they both were with you and just accepting that and saying like oh, we, w we want you to know we're here with you. Like, what can we do to make sure you're good? And that is what true thruppledom is. I totally made that word up. But like that, I believe, is like what makes thruple love work and making and the idea that this is a real valid concept. And And I think that we didn't spend enough time focusing on those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if there was if there was nothing else that like we took away from the show, like that one most important component was that moment of like, no, it is OK to move at the pace of like the slowest person. Exactly. And that we want to move at the pace that is, you know, essentially like the most uncomfortable person because we want them to be comfortable. And it's yeah. not worth it if it's just two people having fun and the third is like, you know. Yeah, I mean, not, I, not I with it. it's like learning how to drive. I'm not going to try to go uh, 60 miles per hour right away. <laughs> um, but 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 for it, it does take, um, especially with a new human, it does take that practice. And, you know, this is something that I've I've been working on. 
um, is I'm, it's very easy for me to let Wilder know uh, anything and everything. And so I'm working on like, it's, it's the reminder that I'm allowed to also give this information to Denise because she's also there, um, you know, as a support system. And I don't have to be worried about um, hurting their feelings because what's worse is actually to withhold information. Right. I'm uncomfortable, but it's, it definitely takes practice to, to go uh, like, like, I mean, the, the famous hot tub scene, um, many other people would have just kind of like maybe grinned and grin and bear it, but then they're going to be upset that evening mm -hmm. and, and maybe regret some things. But what felt really nice was that I was able to say, Hey, like I need to pump brakes. And Denise was very much just anytime you need to do that, that's okay. Yeah. So just another reminder of, um, I'm allowed to the, uh, I'm allowed to feel the things that I am feeling mm -hmm. and I don't have to always push them down for the benefit of, of what I think, what I think is the benefit of us, <laughs> <laughs> but is actually not benefiting anybody. <laughs> no, I mean, to me, that's real connection is like moving through those processes. Like, can you imagine a car that never braked? That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you're, like that is how you relate is that you, you utilize all of these tools with your feelings and your communication. And it's not supposed to be just like, go, go, go. That's not connecting. Mm -hmm. um, it's connecting to like, to, to figure out what our boundaries are and how we're supposed to move together and what we like and what we don't like that's connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish they, I do wish they had, I wish that they had shown some more of the actual, um, what's the word called when you're, when you like, when, when you're, when you're, when you, when you enjoy watching your, one of your partners receive the compersion. Because we had some really good moments of compersion when they just decided, no, we're never going to show that, you know, of Wilder and Denise having time alone. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we didn't see a lot of moments where you were individually together, like, yeah. yeah. Y'all are missing out. Yeah, no, there was, there, was, there was a very hot scene where they were making out in the pool and I was talking to Brittany. Yeah. And Brittany are just like having a chat. Uh, and and uh, well, I forget, did you ask me or did? No, I think Brittany was like, are, are you okay with that? And I was like, honestly, this is hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she, yeah, Brittany's just like, how are you okay right now? And I was just like, I don't know, I just am. Yeah, it was like, I was like, it's like I was looking over and Corey's like, yeah, I'm like, give me the thumbs up. Because, and it's not like you would always need my approval, but in the beginning right. stages, it's, it's just like, it's nice to be, have the check in. Yeah. And that's yeah. important. That's very important. I yeah. Don't... I just, I really wish they'd shown, I think it would have made our relationship a little bit more um, dimensional and that mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for, for people who are new to this, like me, there are moments where I am really okay with them having uh, kissing and interaction and physical and but there's also moments where I get these waves of like the sticky feeling and it's not ever, ever going to be I, I've noticed it's never been consistent mm -hmm. and sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. but what I have noticed is that throughout uh, this past year it has felt a lot I have felt a lot more of that joy seeing them together and a lot less of that ooh feeling but it still comes up occasionally yeah. and and that's natural and i'm sure it it, it it gets less and less as your connection with denise grows and all those things are becoming more more <laughs> they're becoming more and more developed and the feelings are growing would you say you're in love now <laughs> I would say of a, yeah, of a sort. It's like, there's so many different levels to love. And I would, <laughs> of course I love Denise. Uh, it's like that, that word, I feel like has so much weight to it. When in reality, like you love lots of things. It's just like how, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to equate love to a new, a, a third person. Oh, oh, I wanted to tell you, I had this realization um, the last time Denise was visiting. Yeah. I, I think it's an epiphany. Okay. But um, I want to know what you guys think. I, I might have told, I can't remember if I told you this yet, Denise. So I, I realized, um, I was talking to Julia about this. Gosh. I realized that, um, so the whole story about uh, Wilder and I, with, with the other girl, and then them uh, making out before, uh, before I was 
uh, in the room, what I realized actually was bothering mo me more, not just wild, not really Wilder's actions, because I truly like trust him mm -hmm. so much. But I realized that it was more that I don't trust the additional person mm -hmm. because I found out later from her that she doesn't even like girls. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, well, why are we doing this if you don't even like girls? Yeah. So I realized that the, the more that I gain this like familiarity and trust mm -hmm. with Denise, it's like, oh, of course I'm in a safe space. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about him. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't have, because we have 10 years of trust. I'm like, I, I know he's never going to do anything to intentionally hurt me. And he's got, he's, he's looking out for me. So I think that it's, it's a, it's a simple switch, but for me, I'm actually more nervous and anxious about the additional um, woman that we bring in because I'm worried that they don't actually like me that much or that they're going to do something to hurt me. Right. And once I realized that I'm like, Oh, I just have some trauma with female relationships. And I have that's I've lost yeah. a lot of female friends and it's been traumatic. And then these experiences where a girl is saying that she wants to hook up, but then says, Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I don't even like girls. It's like, Oh wait, I don't trust um, getting intimate with, women as easily mm -hmm. and i mean I, I haven't really dated girls before so right. i think it makes sense I mean, this, this is also kind of a queer dilemma like it, i have definitely had my fair share of um queer only when drunk girls ah. and i'm like yep I'm, I'm like so the next day and they're like no <laughs> it's not like that i'm like oh right 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 okay <laughs> oh, oh so you can experiment <laughs> I wasn't experimenting, but okay. Oh, I like, I like, <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, which like, I, I understand everybody's on their own journey. No hard feelings. It's just kind of like, oh, okay. We were on a different page, I think, yeah. just now. <laughs> it, is. It, it is difficult. And I totally get that, Corey, because I've, of course, been in your position. Like, I've been with my husband for almost 20 years. So we've, like, been in different situations. And, and I've had that situation where I felt like, you know, I'm not trying, to, like, it's not necessarily like a jealousy. It's more like you want your feelings to be considered. You also want to be able to trust the person that you're bringing in and knowing that their intentions are pure and that they care about your relationship that they're walking into. And they're mm -hmm. not just trying to take a mallet to it. And that's like, and and I think that's something that we struggle in this society to like understand, especially within the poly community that like, it's okay to have feelings of like jealousy and things like that, but it's not, jealousy isn't always like, at least what it appears to be at the beginning, isn't always like that simple. There's always some underlying issue there. There's usually trauma linked to it. There's usually just a deeper discussion where somebody is feeling neglected, unseen or unheard, you know? Mm -hmm. And all we need to do is come to that, have that conversation and that usually solves most of the issues. And I think that that's something that I think most people are just really uncomfortable with being super honest with their partners for the most part. And I think that's really the biggest issue in the monogamy world, which is why they look at us and they're like, oh, oh, so y'all are just cheaters. Uh, <laughs> right. Like, oh, I'm like, which one of us is communicating our true feelings and thoughts pretty much 24 seven? Is it you guys? Can you come home and say that you accidentally had a thought of having sex with this other person at the gas station? Nope. Okay. I can do that. I can communicate <laughs> <laughs> whatever my true thoughts and feelings are like y'all can't. So <laughs> exactly. and, and I just think that if we cultivate a safe space for feelings and honesty to be normal and a normal part and at the forefront of relationships, which I think is really something that we're not very conditioned to do. I think we're conditioned to be perfect and be the one we're not. And the one is not flawed. <laughs> the one does not cheat. The one doesn't make mistakes. The one doesn't want other ones. 
the one only wants one. And if that's the world we live in and that we're conditioned and raised to be, it's very hella hard to, to see anything else as valid or even right, you know? And, and I think that that's really sad to not be able to break from that like societal norm and realize how beautiful love can be. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's boring. It's confusing also because it's yeah. it's really not true. Like you still have a family that you love dearly and people have multiple children and they don't like only love one of them. That would be confusing. And you have friends normally that you also love. So to like make this distinction it doesn't like there is never going to be the one we're social creatures we we're a community it's like community oriented love it says that it has to be the one it can just be the three the two the five <laughs> the five <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's just it's your community it's your chosen family and i think mm. that is what I think that's what I strive for when it, when I think about polyamory. I think about m my chosen family, my chosen community, and how many of us grew up in shitty situations that we had no like no like control over. How many of us had so much childhood trauma that like we are up to our ears in therapy at this point that we're just like, it is it is what it is. But like, if we are actually in a place where we have the freedom to choose who we love, choose who we want in our lives, and sometimes we don't have to go by what everyone says is the right way to do that, why not? Like, so. Yeah, I mean, it's the opportunity exactly. to receive more, <laughs> more love like yes. why why would you restrict yourself to having yeah just one beautiful romantic connection and opening that concept of of like marriage too like marriage can exist between more than one per two people like that that is a concept that can work and people can make bonds and ties and marriages can exist families can exist like i literally read books to my children about polyamorous families and you know and like how there's parents who don't identify with one gender one gender like i want them to realize that there there's not one dimension to life like there's not just one way of being like everybody's love looks different everybody's family looks different and that's okay and that's beautiful like i'm yeah. so proud of all the things that make me different my my background my my culture like I love being a black woman. I love being a Haitian woman. I love being neurodivergent. I, I love all those things about me. Sometimes they make life really hard and it'd be rough in these streets being black, you know, <laughs> but you, it, I would not change this melanin for nothing because this is, this is given me so much, so much of who I am and has made me so much stronger. And it's my, it's my identity. And that's what I just want my kids to also have that same lease in life and know that you are who you are and be unapologetic about it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just snapping. Like, I love everything you're saying. Say more. Wow. <laughs> what is next for the three of you? What's yeah, your what goal next? for the future? What are our goals? Um, I think, I think, I could, I think our goals are to do a lot more, uh, traveling together, mm -hmm. um, because that has been low key when I'm happiest is, is if we're eating beans out of a can, well, we might do <laughs> that, but <laughs> no, you guys are like lavish cooks, chefs, really. Yeah, we, we do, we do cook, uh, very well when we have our van, we make, we make some, we make some meals. Uh, but yeah, I like, I know, like making, yeah, making breakfast burritos after we just went on a sunrise hike and photo shoot because we have, I, I, we were just talking about how we have all these strengths as, um, photographers and editors and people who like to adventure and why not uh, get together more often and create stuff. At least that's where my mind is when it's like, mm -hmm. what's next for us is I want to, 
I want to just make make things together <laughs> and go on adventures together and go places that the three of us have never been because we do so well exploring new places and it makes me really happy and it it's a really great way to connect more so I think that our relationship will only get you know stronger as we like, yeah make cute videos together and <laughs> take pictures on, the, on a mountaintop and um I mean, other than that, I think we're just kind of riding the wave and having yeah. a good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you guys do like d- by day? Like what's your regular day jobs? Uh, so Wilder and I, uh, we were freelance videographers and editors. He he shoots video. I'll assist him. Okay. And then we both edit. So we have, you know, a few different freelance clients. And so we are able to, to work mostly from anywhere unless we have a booked shoot okay. but, uh, which is yeah which is why we have the camper and why we're able to be at a random desert on a wednesday afternoon <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love the i love the freedom that content creation gives you to be able to do what you want to do so i get that and yeah. how about you denise I am kind of a content creator. I'm not good at it because I don't make a lot of money, but that is what I am doing. Okay, I've been doing this since 2019. I'm I'm with you. <laughs> okay, girl, we're gonna we're it's rolling up and up. It's gonna be great. <laughs> you're the best content creator of us. Yeah, you are. The Denise is the, the best content creator. I I uh, I <laughs> I'm good if I'm if I'm working for a client and then it's like, oh wait, no, you need to post something. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh gosh. What's funny is I like I started my stuff just like for the joy of creativity and like photography yeah. and like making cool things and I just really like that and then it like kind of popped off and I was like oh how do I business how do I business and market <laughs> and I like I'm sure I could figure it out but I kind of don't want to I think <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on a scale of one to ten, how happy are you right now, and why? I'm I'm a ten. That's a, I'm like I have worked real hard to make this little brain of mine so nice to live in because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm the only one living there. So <laughs> I get um, yeah. So I feel like I'm a ten, um, but in kind of more the like buddhist way like through everything that changes externally my internal environment is always pretty fucking good um so yeah awesome how about you two um if i if i forget my perspective i i can kind of like i can swing down pretty low but i always have to remind myself that like i am (laughs) so lucky and the life that i live is fucking amazing yeah. and yeah, we're lucky. like it's 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 up there I, I would say you know somewhere between an eight and a ten on any given day because like life is life is good oh how has your family reacted <laughs> um <laughs> Well, I mean, luckily, <laughs> luckily for me. Yeah, Wilder, Wilder is set on this one. Yeah, I mean, luckily for me, my my sister decided that she was polyamorous a few years back. Okay. Um, and so, like, she already, uh, what do you call it, like, broke the concept of it to my parents. And so then. Parents were like, okay. Like, I showed up at the door. Nice. And it's like, okay, nothing new to see here. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're on TV. Go, okay. Okay. Yeah. You're like, this is our lives. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I told my dad, um, I think right, like a few months after we got back from filming and I was also a little bit lucky because we were hanging out with my, one of my good friends in New York and he had just become polyamorous and was living with his two boyfriends oh, in New wow. York. And so we were all hanging out in his beautiful apartment that they can afford because there's three of them. And uh, how nice it was decorated. And my dad's just kind of going, wow, this is actually kind of great. The three guys <laughs> living together. And I'm just like, is it? You, like, you, you think that's cool? <laughs> I'm like, so you think that's cool? Um, and that, that evening, I was like, well, this is the best time to let him know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think he definitely, he, he was very accepting. But then he definitely had a bit of a hard time when he saw, um, like, all the press and um, how... Mm-hmm 
uh, what people were all the articles being written. He's like, I didn't know this was this was going to be such a big thing. I think he he was less he had less of a negative reaction about the poly thing and more about the, TV. the show. Yeah, and like me being poly in front of a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Public so poly. That, that's yeah. So that's that's taking him some time. But then I never I never told my mom. And then I get a call from her and I'm like, hey, what's up? And she's like, guess what I'm doing right now? And I was like, what? She's like, I'm watching the show with your dad. I'm like, dad, what did you do? Oh my God. <laughs> I just like, I was like the hoping to just like not have a conversation about it with her. I was like, she doesn't need to know. Like, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And then my dad's like, let's watch Corey's TV show. So um, both my parents know and they're, they're, they seem fine with it. It's, I'm, I'm very, very, very grateful to have accepting accepting parents yeah. uh, who pretty much feel good about me expressing myself in these ways because I don't think I ever came out to them it was just oh yeah that that girl that stayed at our house for two weeks Denise oh yeah that <laughs> that without yeah we're yeah we're together <laughs> and they're like oh yeah okay so <laughs> I guess I guess I guess that's how I came out. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, how'd your family feel? My family's in a cult, so <laughs> 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 we are not talking. You have the most interesting answer. <laughs> we do not talk. Yeah, they're pretty much in a cult. Um, I treat them like neighbors. I like I used to volunteer in hospice. Um, and you kind of just like show up and listen to the weird stuff that they say and like give them an ear and like show closeness, even though like it's not about you. I understand. Um, and I, I kind of treat them like that. <laughs> just like I'm volunteering in hospice because they're old too. Like my dad is 93 this year. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of a funny dynamic, but they're, we're not close. They don't really know anything about me. <laughs> I get it. Um, I realized I didn't even told you ADHD brain. I didn't even let you answer the previous question on a scale of one to 10. How happy oh, I was like sick. I skipped that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sweet. Um, I feel like my answer is complicated because like some days it's, it's okay. You know, an 11 because we are so lucky and you know, Wilder helps me remember that every single day. And I have, uh, I have a life that I think, you know, teenager me would have been like what you have a van what you have a great boyfriend what and you have a girlfriend <laughs> like <laughs> oh yeah and you you're going you're traveling all, all the all everywhere um so cool <laughs> yeah and then it's just you know some days it's like oh the state of the state of the world you know has a big effect on yeah on myself and so i it's about kind of balancing uh ignoring all of that but because you can't ignore it it's there and we need to we need to be aware of it and 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 help do stuff do something about it but um yeah so i think it really just depends on the day yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's a three oh. and i just feel really awful but i think that having um this experience as traumatizing as it was i i really did learn a lot and i think we, we came out of it the luckiest ones you sure did and i yeah i couldn't be happier with with the outcome yeah of yeah with the outcome of of the show maybe not how the show went but <laughs> but when you outcome, got out of it <laughs> yeah what we got out of it is actually it's, it's not at all what we were expecting we were just hoping to learn a little bit right and now we're adventuring with a really cute, smart girl who also likes rocks. <laughs> now I have two baddies, two baddie geologists. Um. <laughs> we were we were joking uh, in the week afterwards how we we showed up and robbed the show, like they found this <laughs> great shit for us, and then we're like, "All right, cool, peace." Bye. Um, <laughs> watching watching the finale um, with everyone and like seeing their little triangle wood thing set up i was just like oh my god thank, thank goodness fuck i wasn't there. <laughs> I'm so glad i missed that i mean i thought they were gonna bring us back for you know i, I thought that too i actually yeah, kind of thought... bring you back and make you do the picking thing but i realized you guys would have probably never left and been hidden away somewhere 
Yeah. yeah. We would have had to be in, um, and yeah, in like quarantine in the hotel. So after yeah. we figured yeah. out, oh, wait, no, we're not going back. Is okay. it every, there weren't any un any objects, any set pieces that weren't bolted down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm been- glad we got to explore Panama. Yeah. I'm glad we were like just looking at fish and stuff. That was way cooler than whatever they were doing while filming. You were looking at uh, the that rare we, a new species of of rainforest frog in the at the waterfall. Mm-hmm. That's really yeah, <laughs> we were we were we were on a rainforest tour with a biologist. Yeah, yeah, like, frogs. <laughs> Not really. really it was really important, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the show didn't do things the way that I think a lot of people, especially within the poly community, would have hoped to. I feel like a lot of people would have definitely would have loved to see more education go into it. They would have loved to see more counseling go into it. And they would probably would have loved to see more actual polyamory practiced. But I do think it started a conversation and for a community that is often looked down upon and often ridiculed and invalidated. So I do think that in one aspect, I don't know if they're going to continue and season two will happen, but I think like if it does, I think it would be great for them to take some of the public criticism into perspective and try to make some of those changes because i think it it is great to see things like this like happening on tv and to actually have a place where conversations can at least start and we're not just the weird kids (laughs) yeah yeah i like what i like what ashley and maximo were saying on your episode um of how it, it is still kind of a really new and exciting thing that got to happen. Um, so with all of its problems, like I'm, I'm still so glad that we had, yeah. we got to start here and hopefully it is a starting place. Yeah. Um, I did ask everyone else this, so I should ask you, what would you advise production if you could for next season to change or do differently? How long you got? <laughs> <laughs> One thing. Um, for us i wish we did like adventures like i wish we like actually got to do dates how we would probably want to do them yeah um in terms of like the show i mean the whole thing would have to be uprooted (laughs) yeah yeah i don't know i don't know how they could do it in a way that's like (laughs) <laughs> actually was, makes sense i yeah. think it can be done for sure and it makes me wonder if any of the producers are actually polyamorous okay so this is my perspective i'm a special needs mom and both my children are on the spectrum and mm-hmm. so i watch shows like love on the spectrum and things like that on netflix and they actually really bother me when my children were diagnosed i was completely like what's going on what does this mean and there was so much misinformation out there and it's a lot of misinformation that is still going on out there that really gives my children so much to have to battle when Mm -hmm. they're out in public because they're up against your stereotypes your (coughs) miseducation and misinformation that you're getting from whatever public medium TV that you watch. Every show about autism or person with autism on TV is a complete stereotype. And Mm -hmm. the idea of a spectrum is that like there's very different levels of those type of people. So it's kind of in the same sense where I watch that show and it's very much people forcing neurodivergent autistic people to date in the same way that people who are right. who are neurotypical and we're putting them in this lens and putting a camera on them and we're wondering why they melt down and the show becomes about the meltdowns and these parents who are like, we just want them to be and i understand that as a parent because i do understand the sad part of like you just want your kid to grow up and be happy and be independent and love their lives but when you see things like that and you're realizing that like 
people are out there making this this thing to be looked at like this like animal in a zoo and it feels mm -hmm. a lot like that what they did with this show where it was like look at these people and they're kind of weird they like to like other people and include them in their relationship. Yeah, yeah. And it's already the labor of whatever divergent group, of whatever oppressed group, to learn the language and the standards of this privileged group. And you would probably know this as a woman of color, being a woman at all, and then also being neurodivergent. These are all ways that we have to conform. Um, and for them to make a show that just highlights the labor of <laughs> yeah i think is really inappropriate personally it's but ironic. very ironic <laughs> i'm just glad that this this actually brought me to meeting all of you and having this conversation because this was absolutely wonderful you've represented the poly community very well and oh. <laughs> i think that you you guys have done so well in showing like what true thruples actually go through and experience and and i hope that people listen to this and realize that there was so much more than rock climbing <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, and that there was something very beautiful there and i hope that people could have saw that even just watching through the limited things that they gave you but like i i think this was absolutely beautiful and i'm just really glad to have met you yeah. yeah, thank you for having us and letting us communicate oh, about our experience. Yeah, thank you very much for reaching out. I was low key terrified. I was like, <laughs> I, just, I don't have anything to be ashamed of in, right. in experience. So anything that I would say is is you know how I how I feel. It yeah, it's just I, it's a lot to process. And I think the last you know year I've been kind of putting putting the show like in, you know, trying to put it like behind me and focus on actually just how do you have a, how do you have a relationship with, with two other people and, and remove a lot of the negativities and the, the weird, the weirdness that came with that very confining and restricting and strange what? uh experience but what has the public response been like be now being noticed and recognized um, so far for us, I think that people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, thank you for showing this option. <laughs> yeah, I think we've gotten the most positivity as, um, as, as like as a, as a, as a trio. I know a lot of some of the like Becca and, and um, Jonathan are getting a lot of really good positive feedback but as i think that we've we've we have gotten some criticism a lot of, i think some of it is like the fact that everyone assumes that wilder is manipulate well, not everyone but some people assume that wilder is this manipulative <laughs> yeah um, puppeteer yeah. of me and i'm like no i convinced him to go on <laughs> my idea because i wanted a girlfriend and it's like, not as he would he would guys. he would have just been sitting at home like and been happy and fine doing that he's like i don't want to do this like what do you mean <laughs> like, no it's gonna be great to be like camp and i'm gonna get to date girls <laughs> oh my gosh yeah wilder's normally behind the camera like having being in front of it like what do you feel about that <laughs> exactly Did anyone considering being on a reality show google reality show contracts and wonder why lawsuits exist <laughs> Mm. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's a definitely a misconception that he. Uh, it, it is interesting what people, um, what ideas people come up with and assumptions of you off of very little information, and I, I have found that fascinating mm -hmm. to see what people have decided based off of you know a fraction of what who we actually are. Yeah. Uh, it's been, yeah, it's been it's been interesting. It's yeah. been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've seen in the Reddit that Corey's archetype is like girl who cries, girl who is having hard time or something like that. <laughs> and they're like, like she doesn't even belong here. And I'm like <laughs> What makes you think that people with hypersensitivities, A, like people with any sensitivities, people's feelings, people who just exist in the world normally can't connect? Like, that doesn't yeah. really make any sense. Like, of course, like, everyone's going to have their differing needs and feelings, and we're just going to address those as they come up. And it's not like she, yeah. they're not allowed. Like, that doesn't even... 
makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's almost like I, the the feeling the, the feeling the feeling I got from it was okay. Wait, so you wanted me to just be perfect and have it down and just be like, I know what I'm doing right away. <laughs> It's like why, like people are saying, like why would she go on the show? Why would she go on the show? It's like because I genuinely want to learn and grow and gain some experience, and otherwise I wouldn't be on the show because I'd be like, well, I'm perfect at polyamory, so I don't need to go on a TV show. Mm-hmm. It's like no, I, I really, I went on because I wanted to learn. So yeah, the expectation that that I should have been. Um, cried less uh, and or shouldn't have 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 signed up is silly (laughs) and you were one of the people I connected with the most because I was like okay they're actually going through something real so when you did decide to leave I was like that makes sense that makes sense I was like they got this I was like and and clearly and now that I know like the background more it makes sense like yeah you guys definitely probably wouldn't have made it there in that in that environment where there was so much like hidden things that were kind of like to set you up to fail yeah that was kind of disappointing because this is not a concept that needed to be produced all that much it Mm -hmm. was no yeah i i agree i it, it is it is unfortunate that they felt the need to provide um the storyline that i was constantly <laughs> upset by everything that that denise and wilder were doing and it, it would have been i think it would have been much more helpful for, for people who are sensitive like me to mm-hmm. to to see the scenarios in which i was in which i was okay <laughs> um, yeah yeah oh, that would like help. recognize the growth of different discussions that would have been really cool to see also, like, and our like, responses to that. I feel like they they didn't even like highlight how we got to take care of your feelings. It was more so like girl cries, people watch. I don't. <laughs> yeah, it would have it would have been helpful for for people yeah, to get to to see that. But I guess they they just they wanted the simple the simple edit where yeah, it's an archetype and not much else. Yeah. Again, thank you for coming on and being vulnerable and open and honest. Like that means so much to me. Absolutely love what you did and like the fact that you made such a bold move and like went on and then made an even bolder move and was like, time to check out y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the yeah. fact that you're still together, you're still traveling and you're you're just creating a beautiful life together. And I think that that's what polyamory is all about. So I think that you guys are doing awesome. Congratulations on Thank your you. love and your relationship. And I hope it continues to grow. And I hope you go to all the cool places that you want to go to. <laughs> continue to follow you because i think you guys are awesome so thank you thank you so much thank you this has been another episode of unapologetically anxious me confessions of a haitian girl and until next time bye